And on today's video, we're going to be looking at a lot of people stood in a field. No, seriously, hang around. Here we go. Vous avez fait des tests antigéniques au PCR J'ai beaucoup fait, ouais. Okay, lots of people stood in the field, vaccinated. No. Vous avez des objets connectés, montres, tablettes. Here we have a device. This device is an Ubertooth Bluetooth sniffer. This device supports monitor mode and packet injection. It's commonly used by security professionals and penetration testers. Vous approuvez le fait de participer à l'expérience? Ah oui. Ouais. Juste faire là une petite signature. Et donc vous serez le numéro 8. On essaye de, de trouver un endroit qui soit vierge de, de tout signal. 6 F 6 F 12 12 DD 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 I don't quite understand what positive and negative test results have to do with being vaccinated or unvaccinated. 60. 60. F9. So, there's a lot of browser windows open here. If they're in a field with no signal, that probably wouldn't be so. Which would suggest this monitoring has been done off site. And here you'll see they made a new mistake as a Linux user. They have a problem with the apt-get install and the return for the Kali Linux repositories. Any Linux professional will know how to update the repositories. Pourquoi vous avez accepté de faire ce okay. test? So we have return for Mac address. Je suis pas anti-vax, je suis pas pro-vax. Il y en a qui ont un petit peu peur du coup. De connaître les résultats aussi. Il y en a deux qui sont partis parce qu'ils avaient peur. Par quoi il est, il est généré, on ne sait pas. En tout cas, il est inexplicable aujourd'hui. C'est pas naturel, c'est contre nature. I highly doubt it's unexplainable. Ooh, scary image. Okay, so we've analyzed this. Next, what we're going to do is use the same program they were using called Kismet. Here I'm starting an instance of a Kismet server and logging into that server via the web browser. Enter my login details for the server. And I'm logged in. Now I'm going to select the source. There's my source. Excellent. Now you can clearly see a large group, MAC addresses, devices, and access points. You'll see that some don't really have much data associated with them, and some will return unknown. The problem with, from what I can tell online, is people are searching the database for the first three octets of that Mac that the team in the field were presenting. Well, that's for OEM manufacturers. So Shenzhen Co. in China produce a Bluetooth MCU they will not be registered on the OEM for the first octets. And you're going to see that now. These are all local Wi-Fi addresses, not too dissimilar from Bluetooth. Select one. You'll see there is a manufacturer associated with the first three octets of that Mac. Go through, select some more. Again, 
a manufacturer is associated with the Mac. Oh, an unknown. Again, another unknown Mac. And again, another unknown Mac address. This is because they don't have a license for the first three octets. They're not a recognized OEM, and they just sporadically write these MAC addresses. As long as they don't conflict with, say, Samsung's on the database, they're fine to do that. It's perfectly acceptable. And this has been going on now for 20 years. Again, more unknown Macs. But there are clearly devices out there communicating. Some of them are clients, some of them are access points, some of them are bridged access points. It has no relevance whatsoever that these Mac addresses are unknown or known to the database. And to conclude, for this part of the video, this is the generalization of people not knowing what they are doing or what they are talking about and this whole telegram science scene. And you'll come to learn more about this as the video goes on, that this is, well. Okay, so now we have a BLE 5.2 MCU made by Texas Instruments. This is state of art. You'll note the size of this MCU. I mean, this, this isn't the actual MCU itself, but it is seven millimeters by seven millimeters. And the bit we're interested in, really, apart from these very large kilobyte values, the bit we're really interested in is this, the radio interface. This is what, is what would produce the MAC address. This is what would produce the 2.4 gigahertz signals. If you go down and look at the package size, it's a relatively standard MCU size. It's quite a powerful MCU. Uh, there's many protocols, SPI, UART. There's, oh, it's quite quite a good MCU. You might find it in a in a smartwatch or other peripheral. So this is a decapsulated microcontroller. What you are looking at here is a ROM. And this ROM, we are focusing down to this ROM on a nanometer scale. I'm just setting the coordinate, centering it, 
And in a moment, we're going to find out the x and y coordinates of this. So one instance, two instance, three instance, just to prove uh, zero coordinates are size. So this is possibly the largest needle you could administer to a human being. This is an 18 gauge needle, but these needles are the ones for the vaccine in the red. And this is a representation of the size of that needle in comparison to just these bites in this ROM. Now if we focus down, we can actually see this is the binary representation of these bits in their NAND gates. Now if we focus out, we'll see the true size of the MCU. Now let's look at our syringe again. Hmm. I don't think it's going to fit. We couldn't go down to the nanometer scale without addressing the G word, graphene. Specifically, graphene as a semiconductor used for transistor applications in memory and computation. Generally, it will share a common trait silicon oxide. Although graphene can go small, it still needs silicon oxide. At this moment in time, I'm sure in the future it will be scaled down, but generally uh, for the drain, the source, the substrates and the control gates, everything will remain the same for the foreseeable future. Um, partly down to Moore's law. But yeah, that, that's as simple as that is. Moving on. So now we've addressed the dreaded G word. Let's find out exactly what size this ROM is in kilobits. So when you look at the size of just the ROM in comparison to the rest of the MCU, it is minuscule. Just the SRAM alone in the RF core from the TI chip has 16 kilobytes of SRAM alone. As well as all the other peripherals, the CPU, the flash memory, 352 kilobytes, the RAM, 80 kilobytes. So in conclusion, does the vaccine give you a MAC address? No, certainly not. And it is this whole snake oil selling, this telegram science, Facebook science out there, is massive misinformation. And a lot of it is for their own means. A lot of these people make money off damaging people's mental health. So in conclusion, no, you do not have a MAC address if you have the vaccine. Thank you for watching the video. If I've got through to just one person, yes, you, yes, you, that's right. If I've got through to you, and changed your mind and relieved any hesitancy you have about this subject, then that is excellent because this is my primary objective from a computer scientist point of view is to tell the truth. So there's going to be more content to come. And again, thank you. And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and more importantly with this subject matter is share. It needs to be shared. The people that are having their knowledge gaps filled by pseudoscience and snake oil sellers and general con men out there, con men who are taking advantage of people's mental instability or causing mental instability by preaching this pseudoscience, 
we need to share people. We need to get this out there and to show the general population who don't have this knowledge to hand that these people are wrong. Okay, and thank you again. And more content is coming soon.